Welcome back to Consider This. In this episode, we're talking about devotional life. And we have in our studio, Pastor Dan. Pastor Dan, welcome to the studio. Um, I was wondering, we, we're talking about devo- devotional life. And from a pastor's perspective, if you can tell us what does it mean to have devotional life? How should we um, do it? I don't know. Do you have any insights on that? I think devotional life is very important to have uh, a time set aside for yourself mm. and God. And I'm going to make a confession to you now uh, as a pastor. And maybe this might come as a surprise mm. to you. You know, it's something that I have to discipline myself about as well. Okay. Why? Look, I, I meet with people every day and we talk about spiritual matters. All right. I prepare for sermons, which are spiritual exercises. Mm. I open the Bible every day to try and help other people. So it could come to my mind that, look, I'm always busy with yeah. uh, religious gospely things. So I don't really need to wake up at five o'clock and have my own devotional. Devotional is about you and God. Okay. And I have discovered in my personal life that it doesn't matter how much you use the Bible. If you don't use the Bible, if you don't use um, or if you don't set aside a special time just for you mm. and God, where you come as individual and an, an individual as someone in need to your God to, to, to build your own relationship mm. with him, then I'm not as effective mm. in trying to help someone else. Mm. Wow. I think devotional life is something that needs to be, it, it's something that you need to discipline yourself about. We need to eat every day. You know, sometimes we are so much in a hurry that we skip breakfast. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I get dizzy after a while, you know, and uh, that's something that you need to have every day. How do you go about it? Also on the need. Yeah. Moses who was a very busy leader. Um, we read that he had uh, his tent, he would pitch his tent outside the camp every day and in that tent he would meet with God. That was the tent of, of meeting God, yeah. where he met God. And uh, I think it's important, you know, he took his tent out of the camp, he pitched it outside the camp. You know, sometimes we might think that because we are busy with religious things, with church things, and uh, because we are Christians and we talk to other people about God, that we don't really need to do this anymore. Yeah. Um, our salvation is earned, not earned, received in our intimacy, uh, or intimacy, intimate, intimate space with God, which we need to create. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God is always there. Mm-hmm. He's calling us to spend time with Him. So devotional life is more about me getting ready Absolutely. To, uh, to, to receive God. Absolutely. When we go to church, God is the one inviting us to come. Mm. We are just honoring His invitation. Okay. The, same, the same way, you know, every day God is waiting for us yes. to make contact to enter into communication with yeah. Him. Pastor, um, how would you say, when you have, now, we know that devotional life is important, but how would you go about, what would you do in a devotional hour or when you have your devotions, what would you do? Or how, how would you say we should do as, as young people? Look, I, I think it's important to have some kind of structure yeah. because any discipline or anything that you have to do as, as a matter of habit, mm. be, it, it becomes a habit. Not all habits are, are bad. Mm. Um, but if something becomes just habitual, then, you know, you, you run a danger. Yeah. I think there needs to be some kind of a structure. But I think that it doesn't have to be something unmovable. Okay. I, I want to be very honest with you. My devotional is very varied. All okay. right. Maybe there is a book I like to read. And I just go through that and I think, what are you trying to tell me? What can I get out of this for the day? Mm. Uh, what have I learned today that I can apply in the light of what I've read? Mm. The Bible, of course, is very important. And I, I appreciate it, your honesty. Mm-hmm. You know, come on, man, you come to numbers. Mm. So what do I learn from numbers, from mm. all the genealogies and all the instructions about the sanctuary? I'm sure there's something that you can learn about uh, from that. Mm. But you see, I think that... God wants to meet us where we are at. Mm. Sometimes a song will speak to us much Mm. louder than maybe five chapters in the Bible that we read in such a way just, you know, to go through. I think that it's something also very important that needs to be mentioned. I think that very often, very often, and I know what I'm saying, Mm. one's religious experience is caused by guilt or fear, Mm. not necessarily desire. Mm. You see, if if you find yourself at school and you are going through something really, you know, or at work and you are going through something bad and you remember, man, today I didn't speak to God and you begin to feel guilty and tomorrow morning I'm going to do it. And because of that guilt, you go and do it. Mm. 
or fear if I don't do it, then probably, you know, one of these lights is going to fall on my head or something. <laughs> and and I don't think that's what God, the kind of relationship yeah. that God wants to have with us. When you have a honest desire to have a relationship with someone, then you want to be in that person's presence. Mm. You want to communicate with that person. And I think probably the main objective of having devotional is to become aware of God's presence and involvement in your life. Mm. We go through life as if, you know, sometimes as if there is nothing else but us, the world around us, circumstances, you know, things happen just because it just so happened to happen, mm. you know, and we forget that there is someone interested in us, mm. someone who loves us and who wants to be there for us. Mm. And our devotional life facilitates that context. Yes. So can I ask maybe how many times should we have a devotion? Again, you know, I, I'm not one to be extremely pres uh, prescriptive. But I think that, you know, when you, let me share something with you. We went on holiday, so we went, you know, I was with my, my wife and my kids, and our daughter, she's 10. She's very particular about praying mm. before we go somewhere and when we arrive. She's very particular about praying when we, we go out to restaurants and places, you know. She has no hang-ups about it. And... Um, she realizes, and we're talking about it, and she mm. said, look, we're starting a journey. So in this journey, you need to start it with God. Mm. And in her own words, that's what she communicated. I think every day of our life is a journey. Our life is a journey, but every day is, is if, you, if you want a leg of this journey. Mm. And I think that, as you said, just acknowledging that God is there, mm. that God is interested in me in whatever form or shape, mm opening the Bible, going through a devotional book, reading a book, but I think using the Bible is very useful yes. and very, you know, very important. I think that's, that's good to start the day and to end the day with some kind of acknowledgement yeah. that God is and has been part of what's happened to you. Mm -hmm. About being prescriptive, one very short story. I had the privilege for the past few years to work with the Sun people in the Kalahari. Mm -hmm. And we had one of the missionaries coming from the United States, a very proper Christian. And he became very annoyed with the fact that the Bushmen were not having devotional in the morning. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we tried to explain to him it's a different dimension, different type of understanding of what, you know, the Bible is all about. But then we asked one of them, look, why don't you wake up at six o'clock in the morning and, you know, open the Bible or listening, mm. listen to the iPod on the Bible, you know, the Bible in their yeah. language on the iPod. It, it's, and, uh, and they said, we acknowledge God every single moment of our lives and of our days. Yes. As we go hunting and we are running through the, uh, through the desert and looking for this bark or that bark, we are thinking of the Creator. <laughs> we thank the Creator for what we have mm -hmm. received. We acknowledge the Creator. So they don't necessarily kneel and open the Bible yeah. and start reading and have a hymn and a closing hymn and an opening prayer and a closing prayer. They acknowledge God in their own way. All the way. time. Absolutely. And I think that's how we should live. Yeah. We should acknowledge God in everything, in, in, in anything that we do. We should always just remember that He He's the King of us yeah. and we we His subjects. Thank you, Pastor Dan, for that insightful You're um, view. Thank you for joining us for this segment. And after the break, we, go, we will continue this short discussion. Family-friendly, global vision, and a holistic approach to thinking and living, unlike any other media source on the planet. Welcome to Hope Channel. Every hour of every day, any family member can watch. Hope is educational, inspirational, focusing on lifestyle and health, and offering programs for young and old alike that teach culture, positive values, and spirituality. It takes a global network to be in touch with planet Earth's global community. Hope broadcasts everywhere in the world with seven global channels and we're affiliated with more than 50 media production centers on six continents. The result? Hope Channel provides a diverse cultural programming mix in many of the world's major languages. Hope is more than great television. It's also part of an international conduit of educational institutions, churches, retail outlets, and hospitals that represent a solid economic base. And Hope Channel viewers are loyal, encouraging friends and neighbors to watch. 
why? Hope viewers believe that Hope Channel not only enhances living, but changes lives through its compelling lineup of programs. Documentaries, taking your subscribers around the world and back through time, visiting places where history was made. Fascinating biographies that open up the lives and times of people who made a difference in society. Travel programs that transport the viewer around the world, demonstrating how people work together to make a better planet. Inspirational programming challenges viewers to experience the joy of discovering faith values and offering spirituality as an important part of a balanced lifestyle. Health and lifestyle programs teach disease prevention and make healthy living simple and attractive. Hope Channel programs provide invaluable support for developing healthy relationships and strong communities. Diverse and positive programming. A global infrastructure and network. A commitment to family-friendly programming 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. This is Hope Channel, your source for quality of life programming.